Hello, I'm Dean Martin with Transmission Digest. Welcome to the Transstar Industry Studios here at Babcock's Media. Hi, I'm Brendan Baker with Transmission Digest, and today we're here with Mike Riley, our uh, transmission guru and contributor. And uh, we're gonna talk about uh, something near and dear to all of uh, every technician's heart, and that's uh, vehicle diagnostics. One of the things that we get from readers and viewers are, you know, what do they do with uh, a vehicle that doesn't operate correctly and how do they go about diagnosing it and determining the problem? Are, do you have any suggestions? Well, proper diagnosis is extremely important uh, and can be the difference between profit and loss on any job. Uh, beyond that, it could even prevent replacing the wrong part and alienating a customer. Right. Yeah. If you're just throwing parts at something and, you know, and then you come back and say, well, that wasn't it. So that's not really the... You don't want that. That's not the way to, to go about it. Are diagnosing vehicles today more difficult than the past? I mean, we've got all these scanners and electronics and all that, but, you know, some people think you just plug something in and it gives you the answer. When vehicles were simpler, relatively speaking, uh, a technician would merely ask the car owner what the problem is, take the vehicle on a road check, put it up in the air, look for some uh, uh, external connections like vacuum lines or throttle cables and rods, mounts, and so on, and then drop the pan and see how much debris was in it. Uh, with today's vehicle complexity, computers uh, make it much more difficult. Uh, you have to access diagnostic trouble codes to use as a guide uh, to try to direct you in the right direction. Uh, beyond that, uh, accessing hydraulic and electrical schematics is also vital. Speaking of which, we've had, you know, one of our more popular videos on uh, uh, the F-150 harsh shifting issue. It seems to get a lot of attention. What would be your suggestion, people think like you can just, you know, plug something in and get the answer to it. And, and it's kind of what you're saying. You have to, you know, pull up the schematics. But I mean, is it, it's not something that your, your average backyard mechanic can do, is it? No, in fact, case in point, uh, when you get something like a, uh, an F-150 truck that would have like a 6R80 transmission and a shift problem develops, uh, you can't just, well, I'll drop a pan and replace a solenoid. You have to be able to hook up a scanner, pull any DTCs, uh, be able to read certain input information. Uh, you also need to be able to uh, go online and pull uh, things like hydraulic schematics to see what circuits are involved, what valves, what solenoids, and so on as well as uh, exploded views of valve bodies, if that's what's needed, to be able to get to the source of the problem and not just throw parts at it. So it's not just a simple process uh, like before, uh, we got a vacuum line off, just put a vacuum line back on. Right. You know, so it is much more difficult. And, and you can't just watch, you just can't watch a video because there's no one fix fits all. And you have to be able to uh, identify the problem and go to the information uh, related to it. With that said, are there other actions that a technician can take to determine the source of a problem? You know, technicians have to have accessibility to OEM information. Uh, I mentioned DTCs, diagnostic trouble codes. You have to be able to pull those to know what the meaning is. Also, beyond that, you have to be able to access TSBs, technical service bulletins, to see if that problem is an ongoing problem that can also relate to other uh, components. And now the TSBs and the DTCs, uh, for one, a DTC, you're not going to just be able to read with any OBD code re reader. You have to have uh, a much better proprietary type system, right? Yeah, if you use a scanner and pull up a DTC code, uh, it's gonna give you somewhat of a limited uh, explanation. Whereas if you can go online, you can get an expanded meaning of that, which right. might be more beneficial. 
and then that pulled up with your subscription to some of these services. You might be able to pull up a, a TSB a tech service bullet and it might kind of give you a further detail on that. So, Absolutely. Assuming the technician has difficulty in finding and fixing the problem, what services might be available to get the job done? Well, when dealing with transmission-related uh, issues, uh, technical services such as ATRA and ATSG are extremely beneficial. Uh, beyond that, uh, there are technical websites such as TRNW, uh, Transmission Brotherhood, uh, that can also provide a lot of information. Once you get outside of the transmission issue uh, and you're dealing with the entire vehicle, there are other services such as All Data, Mitchell Pro Demand, and Identifix that uh, you should subscribe to, uh, which provides an array of information dealing with the entire vehicle, not just the transmission. Uh, so it is important to know what the problem is, but also where to go to get the information to fix it. Right. If you if you don't have accessibility to that information, especially today, uh, you can be really uh, running into problems. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, you've kind of hit the nail on the head here. I've heard a lot of shop owners I've talked to say that really the key today is just having the, inf the right information. Not just information, but you need to get the right information and, in order to get the job done. And unfortunately, uh, you also do have to have capable scanners, yeah. which are not cheap. And uh, the information is changing all the time. The scanners have to be updated because the scanner is what enables you to access vehicle information, but also to provide uh, the ability to upgrade uh, computer programs that are needed uh, for the vehicle. So you should be able to reflash something in the in the uh, you know the TCM or whatever. Adapt, relearn, reflash, reprogram. It goes on and on. It goes on and on. How long do you think some of these scan tools are good for? It seems like they're coming out with a new one every year, but you know, shops aren't buying one every year. Are they keeping them five years or less? You can get a range of application. If you have some of their newer scan tools, those can be updated yeah. with newer information. The modules and right. stuff. But so much of this is now going to even pass scanners to web-based information. Right. So, it's in the cloud. So you just use a, a J2534 and plug it in and yeah. download. And, and hopefully your internet connection is good at that point. And hopefully yeah. the internet connection is good. We appreciate everyone's comments on our videos over the last year. and. Uh, uh, we want to open it up if you have any uh, ideas um, for future upcoming videos or any uh, technical problems you're dealing with at your shop um, on, on a certain transmission, give us a shout. And uh, if we use your idea on, on a video, we'll give you a $25 gift card. And you can uh, send all your, your ideas and suggestions over to Mike here, Mike Riley. So it's M Riley at transmissiondigest.com. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.